Search and rescue dogs serve on the front lines, locating people missing after natural disasters, lost children, injured hikers and others, being ready at a moment's notice to bravely endure the elements and save lives. Supreme Master Ching Hai, world-renowned humanitarian, artist and spiritual teacher, speaks of her admiration and concern for these devoted canines. And I saw many dogs, you know, they use for a rescue mission. Uh, they just walk in like nothing. But I feel so bad about them. Dogs walk in the sharp, broken glasses or anything like that, even chemical leaking or anything, or, or germs or danger. And these are precious dogs. They've been trained for years, and they even lay down their life for anyone at command. You have to protect that dog. To show her loving support for search dogs and their human partners, Supreme Master Ching Hai has generously contributed more than 80,000 US dollars to search and rescue teams in 18 countries including Australia, Belgium, Canada, Chile, China, the Czech Republic, Ecuador, France, Korea, Malaysia, Nepal, New Zealand, Panama, the Philippines, Slovenia, the Netherlands, the UK, and the USA. Today's program features one of these courageous teams. Search and Rescue Dogs Australia, SADA, based in the Mornington Peninsula. In the state of Victoria, Australia, SADA is an all-volunteer, non-profit organisation that provides professionally trained search and rescue dogs that work together with human partners to locate lost and missing persons. The group's services are provided free of charge to law enforcement agencies. On call 24 hours a day, in 365 days a year, Members are always ready to provide assistance. Julie Cowan is president of the dedicated organisation. Search and Rescue Dogs Australia SADA was started about 15 years ago and uh, we have teams in Victoria, Queensland, New South Wales and Western Australia and we just train dogs to save lives. Depending on their personality and fitness level, Team member Andrew Cowan says certain types of dogs will excel in search and rescue missions more than others. Often we have to evaluate the pups in the litter to see there may only be one or two pups out of that complete litter that's suitable. Mm. Um, there are certain tests that we do with the pups. Um, but basically what, what we want to see is um, the pup to be very inquisitive. Um, and, and not frightened at all of, of humans. Mm. So these dogs are, are really are very friendly. It doesn't matter who they are, they'll run up to them and, and they just love people. It's very difficult. The stats are worldwide that probably one in 400 dogs will actually make, make it to an operational status, mm. um, pass all the tests and that. amount of time is put into diligent training in various activities, situations and search methods in preparation for missions. How long did it take you to train your dog? This is Will. He's only just 18 months old. He's been training since he was seven weeks old and he's, he's about up to his uh, fundamental skills assessment level which is all the basic search training which involves just obedience, uh, agility, uh, general searching area and then I think probably in about six to eight months he'll be ready for his basic operational standard where um, we'll be able to go on a search. And how often do you actually uh, train the dogs? I do something with them every day, something small. It's not necessarily a search, but it's a, a bonding thing. Uh, we officially train every weekend, um, and then we do go away for um, camps, and do different exercises away on camps. It's a huge 
commitment. It takes probably around about 5,000 hours to train a, uh, an operational search dog. So it's a lot of hours and a lot of commitment. With their acute senses and great agility, the dogs are invaluable in conducting timely search and rescue missions and learn to work under varied conditions, such as in wilderness or open country and during urban disasters. In wilderness searches, the canines are asked to locate individuals such as hikers, climbers and vulnerable people such as children and the elderly who have gone missing. In urban searches, the teams are asked to find victims of human cause or natural disasters. Our area search dogs are refined dogs where the dogs come back to the handler and let them know that they found someone then take the handler back to them in an area search but in a rubble or disaster area they have to stay with it. The standard for urban search and rescue says the dog must stay at the victim. A strong relationship between the dog and their human partner is essential to build a successful search and rescue team. We like to um, what we call imprint the pups. Um, so virtually as soon as the pups are born, um, we'll take over an article of clothing that we've worn um, and that'll go in the litter with all the pups um, and then the pups will be um, attuned to, to our, our smell. It's very important to build the bond between you and the dog. Um, you know, I've had him from seven weeks old. Um, he actually sleeps uh, in the bedroom with us um, so that they're constantly with us. Um, he goes, goes to work with us. Anywhere we go, the dog goes. So you have to expose them to all different environments, um, different surfaces, um, you know, steel ladders. Just put the dog into as many different situations you can when they're young. Um, and then nothing will sort of phase them when they get older. When we return, we'll see one of the more challenging training exercises for the canine members of Search and Rescue Dogs Australia. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television.